everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It has been a while. Welcome to Adobe Live. This is day two of Vector Art with Jeanette Lia. Hey, Jeanette. Hi. <laughs> Did I say your last back. name right? I'm always like... Really Mr. close. Li um, Lia or Li? Lia, like Liao. I mean, Liao. like Meow, like a cat. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I love that. That makes it really easy to remember that. I love it. <laughs> well, welcome everyone to day two. Yesterday you had the wonderful Claudie Virgin as your host. And then today you have me, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> for those who don't know me or haven't seen me on Adobe Live before, my name is Jasmine. I work for the Adobe team. I actually do product marketing for graphic design. Um, and I'm really excited to be on the stream today with Jeanette and learn more about what you do. Um, especially using Illustrator and Illustrate on iPad, which has been a really exciting month for us. So yeah, Jeanette, just tell us a little bit about yourself um, for those who are just joining today, and then we can, you can catch me up on everything from yesterday. For sure. So um, for anybody who wasn't here yesterday um, or want to learn a little bit more about my work, uh, my name is Jeanette Liao. I am a illustrator slash designer. I live in Brooklyn. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area, so I do identify as a Cali girl. Um, <laughs> and I have done a lot of work in illustrative typography and um, spent a few years doing murals. Um, so that's kind of like on the independent artist side of things. I've done all sorts of um, design work, like agency style work as well. Um, and currently um, I do graphic apparel um, design. So I design collections for different music artists. Um, and I've also done a similar um, line of work um, back in the day at Nike as well, doing um, graphic apparel for sportswear. So that's a little bit about me. That's awesome. Have you always wanted to like work in that in that niche of like design for apparel? It feels like very close to home, especially if you love style and grew up like dressing up or making clothes. Is that something yeah. you wanted to do? You know, I didn't I didn't know that I wanted to do it, but when I kind of fell into it, I slowly started to um, appreciate kind of the power of that specific canvas, just realizing that um, graphics on specifically t-shirts, which is such a humble um, universal um, canvas actually have just so much historical context and just so many different ways of referencing um, uh, different graphic styles and just mean something different on that particular yeah. um, canvas. So the more I got into it, the more it just really, I let it kind of define me and my work. Yeah, I love that. It's awesome because it makes me think of like how we've gone from like more like brands and labels and thinking about t-shirts in that way and like how they represent like certain artists but then going into this new generation where you go to concerts and there's like all of these like concert merch and the t-shirts are like more memorabilia but they're also like really beautifully done and so they serve like another purpose as well so it's kind of like all of these things yeah yeah it's incredibly yeah. personal um yeah as opposed to just like getting a print or even you know having done murals I think um like large scale kind of you know implies that it's very impactful and it is and but I think you know that humble graphic um worn item is actually actually such a more personal choice you've chosen for that graphic to represent yourself so Totally. Let's, I would love to hear a little bit more about you. And then I'm going to um, tell the chat about the creative challenge that's going on. And then we'll get started with your work. So you said you do murals. I, I love, I wish that's like one of those things I wish I could do, but I can't. <laughs> and I love to hear more about like how you got into that and I'm seeing sneakers. I'm already basically fangirling right now, so I'm going to let you take <laughs> <What> it. <sense? laughs> 
Um, so Mural is how I got started. Um, I just, to be honest, I had been working in a certain area of the industry like for a while, very much like insular and dealing with a lot of digital things. And I had a craving to really be out in the world and to also be affecting people um, in an unexpected way, um, people that I would never meet um, and just kind of like at any point in the day, they may not be expecting to consume this thing, but it, it would be like in their environment. So I had a craving um, for that, just really a real life and tactile encounter um, with artwork. So I began to pursue that um, when I uh, left my job back in um, Oregon and I moved out to New York. I really um, just chased walls, I guess you could say. I love that. Are you in, re um, are you in New York now, excuse me? Yes. Yeah. I'm in New York now. It's not the New York that I had moved to um, a couple years ago, but I, I love it the same. Yeah. I mean, your space looks awesome. FYI, I apologize <laughs> for my space, friends. I am in the process of moving, but just look at Jeanette's beautiful setup and it'll distract you. Oh my God. I kicked my boyfriend out today so that he wouldn't. <laughs> Kind of sliding along the floor <laughs> during my stream. So You're like you gotta go today. Just yeah. just for a couple hours. <laughs> well, I love and you have such a diverse portfolio. It's it's really cool, honestly. And um yeah, I can't wait to see how you're you know taking your experiences like in your because you're actively in your industry doing a lot of this cool work, but it's it, it'll be nice to see what you do in your personal project. Um, but before we jump into that, you guys, we have, of course, um, we have a daily creative challenge going on and the lovely Voodoo Val, shout out to you Val, I miss being you around. Um, she just prompted the Photoshop creative challenge today and that is some shadow work. So playing into some Halloween shenanigans. Um, so you add a shadow to any photograph using the selection tool and the smart objects tool. And so make sure you guys play around with that and then send us your work and then we'll review it later on today in the stream. So you just go to Behance, go to the creative challenge tab and then send us those pieces so we can check them out later. All right, so that is our PSA. We're gonna go back to Jeanette. And yeah, so catching up on what we did yesterday and let's let's start doing some more fun stuff. Yes, for sure. So um, yesterday we started on this collection um, that is so a collection of graphic apparel, um, focusing on a lot of like cozy and easy to wear pieces, but hopefully adding in some elevated um, aspects as well. So we get something, you know, exciting thrown in there after a full year of um, loungewear. Um, and we are, gonna be inspired by uh, this Lauren Hill song called I Gotta Find Peace of Mind. Um, for you, those of you that know it or know the album, you know that it is extremely raw and just very, um, you know, for me, it was a choice um, that was really in, you know, in reflection of what's gonna be the, what I assume the feeling of this week, which is a bit tense, a bit, you know, um, things are out of our hands and just a sense of like, we you know, after voting, we might have to just kind of like um, surrender, you know, what, what will be will be type of vibe. Yes. So I kind of hope to have us all be in conversation about that as well so that we can be like a safe space um, for the rest of today and that we can just reflect on, you know, the things that we um, are capable of doing from, from right here um, and, and hopefully not worry too much about everything else in the world for, for this moment. So um, what we did uh, more literally yesterday was that we finished this um, t-shirt design. So I was talking about how I wanted to make this the hero piece of the collection, which is kind of the piece that I wanted to um, draw, you know, take elements of this and dial it out onto different graphic elements for the rest of the collection and just show you how I um, make a collection of, uh, cohesive within itself, um, but also give, you know, each, pe each piece something of interest. Um, so I did, you know, kind of wrap up this design for those of you who tuned in yesterday. Um, you'll notice that I, I did swap out the A because I was saying that I like the pro version of this font. I like the A in that, so I swapped that out. And then um, in order that we would finish this project today, because I know I'll just be 
like talking a lot. <laughs> and so I wanted to make sure that we had the satisfaction of wrapping up the project um, and seeing it in its final form. So I did go ahead and just kind of like do um, like start off a few of the other pieces. And so I'll just kind of talk through where I'm going with this and what the plan is for today. So um, I talked about the t-shirt and you you saw me yesterday kind of take the, the type um, design from here and then um, just quickly wrap it up into this little like archway. We were talking about, you know, seeing something on the, um, or having an expectation of something better on the other side. Um, and what I added to it was the back hip because I think I don't want to spend too much time in Photoshop um, with you guys today because we are going to be living in Illustrator mostly and on the iPad as well. So I just wanted to quickly Photoshop in. This is, if you don't recognize it, this is um, the cover from that MTV Unplugged album and I just like flipped it around, inversed it, threshed it out a little bit. Um, it's really kind of like a personal style that I, I often do for music stuff. So I wanted to use that and you'll notice that I brought in um, this um, line um, item. So the theme is really going to be uh, me figuring out like what are the puzzle pieces from here that we can use on the other um, apparel items. So I use that as kind of um, a way to frame this album cover so that it would really live with the rest of the collection and make sense. And then here I just quickly, and I did this on the iPad, just threw in this, this um, little line of lyric, which is um, what a joy it is to be alive, um, to get another chance. Um, I don't really care that it's not that legible because I think a lot of um, you know, the emphasis is really on the peace of mind bit and a lot of the other elements are going to be just like supportive um, elements to kind of just help um, to like add to that main kind of hero item. So that's the back and today we're going to be working on um, icons similar to this. This type I actually lifted from um, one of her other singles itself and then I just added the mist to the front of it. Um, and I'll do that a lot. It's kind of like lift things and then repurpose them. So I'll show you how I do that um, in the rest of the icons that I want to build because I do want to do some massive, um, you guys reacted pretty well to the sleeve hits um, that I was starting on yesterday. So I want to do some, you know, really massive sleeve hits here and then one uh, big type thing here. So that's the plan for that. And I'm excited to tell you about the plan for this piece. I know it's ambitious that we're doing a full collection, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> I think if I, I love it, if she can get me to stop talking in a minute, I could actually get to it. <laughs> but I do, I, I do actually, I, I'm really excited about um, this one. I feel like this is going to be like that, like super covetable item um, um, that's going to have like a buddy as a, like a sweatpant. So what I wanted to do is, I mean, these like, these collegiate style oversized vintage crew necks mm. are really um, in right now. And people, you know, people are loving them, but how can I kind of like put a twist on it and also make it feel really authentic to what we're doing here as opposed to just, you know, slapping it on. So instead of being Columbia University, it's Columbia Records because um, that was the label. And I actually um, just quickly uh, created this with like a type warp and through like a vintage texture over the top of it. Um, and I lifted the typeface from a Bob Marley um, uh, record, um, a vinyl rather. And it just had like the Columbia that was actually um, warped similarly. So I thought that was cool because we could stay kind of authentic to, to that. So what I'm gonna do is add in a ton of like these elements um, that we're gonna finish up today um, from here and here and here and just really just create this um, kind of beautiful color story similar to what we see in our mood board. I so if you didn't join us yesterday, I had this mood board <laughs> that I made. Um, I don't want to reiterate too much, but basically I'm going to, I'm going to reference this often to make sure I'm sticking to the palette I started off wanting to use. So this sweatshirt is going to really um, feel similar to these pieces here, which I, you know, I love that kind of like update on uh, like a vintage, like off-white colorway. Mm -hmm. um, with some bright pop colors and just something refreshed. So this is meant to look like I took like my dad's like Columbia University thing or something and then um, I uh, embroidered a bunch of stuff on it to make it updated and cool. So <laughs> 
on I the back. I already. Put, thank you. <laughs> I know I'm excited about it. I'm talking really fast, but that's because I'm realizing how much I want to do. So hopefully, <laughs> but let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, so something that I couldn't help myself but do kind of like after the stream ended is, you know, I was looking at my little, my little page of lyrics that I showed you yesterday, lyrics that I was taking out of the song that I think are really visceral and just carry a lot of emotion and its simplicity. And I just thought there was something um, so um, simple, but so powerful about the way um, she repeats, um, you know, free, 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 free. And she's really speaking to a higher power, like at that point and trying to find that connection and trying to basically beg for someone to, to help her be uh, better herself. And I think that's so powerful because it's entirely simple and human and something that we all um, have just a, a sense of at some point or another um, is like, well, you know, how do I do this? And so um, this is like a super simple design and I want to keep it simple on the back, um, but just from, you know, freedom to freedom. And um, then we'll embroider this, this uh, light blue piece down the center. Um, and in that we'll kind of set the poetic tone for how we want to carry out the graphics here as well. Right. So I feel like I do a limited run of this because I think I want to buy basically <laughs> everything. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I, I was like, well, I don't get the opportunity to self-assign something very often. So I'm going to do, you know, the, everything that I like and actually put it into um, a collection. And the goal is that I want it, you know, as well. Yes. Myself. Well, so. you have some fans here also. So let us know if these get printed. You already have some uh, pre-orders available. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I should have, yeah, we could, I'll set up the form right now yes. <laughs> at any downtime that I have. So so the last thing that I did is like um, really simple. And again, I wanted to do things that would just be like really redundant for me to explain as I talk through. I didn't want to um, you know, definitely open it up to any questions about how I did any of these things. But in general, I'm going to be doing similar things and just more today. So I just want to get this out of the way so that we could actually see the full collection come together. But again, welcome to questions. So all I did was I took this type piece from up here and then I just added this little illustration here. Again, every time I use this typeface, which is called Sloop, by the way, S-L-O-O-P, um, I don't really intend for it to be that legible, but if someone does come up close, then they have something to discover. So that's kind of what I'm going for, for everything in that category. So um, another lyric that I wanted to add in was, um, please don't be mad at me. I have no identity, which is actually, I think one of my favorite little lines that she just slips in um, during the song. So I have to go back and re-listen because some of these lyrics I know and then that the one you just mentioned I don't even remember that in the song yeah she just slips it in but then like <laughs> when I was you know researching for this and just making sure I got everything covered I was like I feel like this actually is super just like integral to the meaning of yeah. the entire song so yeah I, I got a question well, a few questions coming in one is really interesting um, because you work in, you know, the world of music and brand, you probably have like a, a good lens on this. So how do you go about when you do projects like this for labels? How do you go about like copyright with, you know, lyrics and, you know, when you're referencing certain things, like how does that work? And that's something I have no idea. So I'm curious, too. I mean, that's a great question, um, especially since I I started my apparel design career really working at Nike and you can only imagine kind of the rules there of how mm -hmm. we guard you know brand and all that and so this is similar but definitely more nuanced so in like the music um, arena there is just so much to do with like you know who is it their family for so for instance Lauren Hill um, or someone like you know Bob Marley like they're um, they're not in the midst of their career. So they're kind of like um, whatever they have determined you can use, like assets that you can use um, are going to be like, there's usually like a guide of like what you're able to use. And then of course, for like more current artists, there's going to be like, you can actually communicate um, for, you know, any albums coming out or and whatnot um, and maybe go back and forth on like what would legally be okay. And 
um, just obviously being really mindful of the fact that every little thing is owned by somebody. Um, but as a designer, I, I always want to break some rules or not break rules, <laughs> but just kind of just just enough where you're just like, you can't really say that that's, that's totally against the rules. And like in yeah. my mind, I mean, this is like sad, but I'm like, well, sometimes if I break it a little bit, but it looks amazing. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, I, on the record, I didn't say that, but um, I think that's just like a common like designer minded thing is just like, but what about this? <laughs> no, I totally agree. <laughs> and we're all Adobe Live, we're all a community. We're all <laughs> what happens in Adobe Live stays in Adobe Live. Um, but, but realistically, you know, <laughs> yeah. break the rules and then check um, at the end of the day because you don't want to work on a bunch of stuff like right. and, then, and then it can't go to market and whatnot. So exactly. Yeah. <sighs> I yeah. like that advice. I feel like that is very true to how majority of us think. So <laughs> you just said it better. <laughs> I mean, it's not fun to just, you know, get your little uh, branding tech and then just be like, I see. Like, mm -hmm. I will do what you expect me to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, so, oh so hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, um, I think that was great. Let's see. So... I'm going to just start getting to work a little bit on these things. And um, again, I will be hopping back and forth on on my iPad. So Illustrator on my iPad um, a bit. So that's just going to be what's happening today. Awesome. We have, I'm going to answer Fairy's question. Does Illustrator have the same basic learnings with Photoshop? I would say they're fairly different. I mean, there's some tools that have similar nuances, but the biggest difference is when you're working in Illustrator, you're working more, you're working in Vector and then Photoshop, you're working with pixels. So that kind of steers you into two different directions sometimes. So um, I would say there's some things, but it's mostly you know, a little different when you're trying to learn the two. And then Jessica is interested in learning more about your design process. So I'm sure we'll cover a lot of that while we're going through these next steps of your project. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about um, design process. And um, I think even though I work in so many different types of verticals, um, it's always pretty similar um, in that, um, in the beginning, I start off being really hungry for information because, um, you know, I don't pretend to know. I think as designers, we, we design not for designers. So um, usually we're working for um, either industries or brands that we kind of have to humble ourselves to, to admit that we don't know everything about them. Um, and so it always starts with kind of like the hunger of um, learning about not just um, them as a brand or as a person or whoever you're working for, but also as um, to learn about the industry as a whole, what's going on, um, you know, cultural context, everything like that. So it always starts with just a ton of research, um, which sounds really boring, but um, for me is one of my favorite parts because that's when I start to get inspired about what I can do to um, be respectful of what's happening in that world, but also uh, bring in something new. How can I bring um, new eyes to this um, industry? So that's kind of like in short what I would say I start out with in my design process. So right now you can see I'm bringing in this element from the first piece. Like I said, I wanted to really um, just have um, a through line of certain little things throughout every piece, but they'll have a different story within each individual piece. So right now I'm working on this added embroidery to update this, I'll call it like dad university um, sweatshirt. So I definitely, I don't want it to be a Columbia Records sweatshirt. I want it to be just, it happens to be Columbia Records, mm -hmm. um, but you're really using it to do something new. So, you know, as I'm designing um, for apparel, I also have to stay cognizant of like what um, just basic garment 
rules I'm choosing to adhere to or break um, more often than not, you know, it's unless it's like a sh pretty special um, piece where they're just like, please break all rules. Like I, I try to stay within um, just what's possible. Otherwise it just often is like a headache of how we're going to achieve this. So you'll see that, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to have an embroidered um, situation go down to um, the band of this crew neck. So we're going to keep this uh, like uh, achievable by <laughs> keeping it within this um, print area. So I think I'm going to keep that and then add in, let's see, well, let's add in this little archway we made. And so that's inspired by the original cover, that piece, the peace of mind. Yeah. So the peace of mind is just something I created from scratch, like this typography oh. piece, because there isn't much. Um, and I think I touched on yesterday, you know, the miseducation of Lauren Hill is such a um, kind of like, that's the, that's the album that seemed to be, at least at the time, you know, what is easy to love um, and therefore easy to draw inspiration from and, you know, have, you know, graphics potential already made for it. Um, and this album was a little just, I think it was polarizing in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. I don't think people in the industry necessarily um, were eager to be like, oh, this is genius or anything like that. So, so this gives us an opportunity to, you know, now looking back, you know, create something new and appreciate it in a new way um, since there's not much to draw from. Um, so we'll kind of take that as an advantage in the situation. Yeah, I think that's a great call out. It's like, it's a common trend to see, you know, iterations of, and they're not so much iterations, it's kind of really just like taking from um, older artists or like timeless artists, like the Beatles and, you know, the, um, with other good examples, like Pink Floyd, like all of those bands and you see that work, you know, being replicated in apparel all the time. And it's usually pretty true to the original artwork that, you know, it originally came out with. And maybe there's some tweaks here and there. Um, so I like the fact that you're focusing on, Lauren was a, and still is a pretty mainstream artist, but you're kind of leading in towards some piece of art of hers that wasn't so, you know, exactly. out there. Yeah, and you can really, really make it your own. I think that's a great idea. That should be a creative challenge. What do you guys think? Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. there's like a little room there for um, for just new eyes. And at this present day, you know, what people would make of it. Especially, you know, that's why this album spoke so much to me now because mm -hmm. I was like, there's actually so much wisdom. Um, I'm not actually, but there's... Um, so much that is completely relevant to um, how we're feeling today as well. Not that that was so long ago, but you know what I mean. With yeah. The last four years, say, we don't mm -hmm. get into that, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And you're so right. And yeah, this is just, and I really like the message with, I didn't, you know, I'm, I feel like a lot of us, we always get wrapped up in, for example, there's a mainstream artist we love and there's a one particular song that, you know, gets all the clout and is on all the billboard charts and it's that one song and then you play it over and over again, but you never actually dive deep into the album that it was released with. And then in that album, you end up finding all of these sweet little nuggets of songs that, you know, never get the same clout as that mainstream song, but they hold some significance to you. Yes. You know, that, that's what this reminds me of a lot. And like, I call them the, like the underdog songs that are just like so good, but it's like, why doesn't anyone like appreciate the song as much? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's like part of the, what I love about like being a designer for sometimes random things is that you're forced to like, just stare deep into the soul of what that thing is. Right. Um, 
and just really learn more about it than you would have typically. And I'll admit, you know, I, I did like that album, like initially, um, but I never really looked into, you know, some some songs. I didn't know some of those songs and I thought I knew right. the album. Um, and then further, like I didn't really consider like some of those lyrics either. But doing this, even just like doing the research for this forced me to be like, um, just live inside of it for a minute. And yeah. most of the time it's it's like completely worth it because you've, yeah, it's like bonus, bonus points. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Oh, you got some questions. Hello, Saram. If I said your name correctly, it is awesome. Um, regardless, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> They ask, well, first off, compliment, love your work. So there's a two part question we got. Are you eyeing the scales of each graphic element? And then his follow up question, how do you determine the intentionality behind colors? Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, okay, so for the first question, how do I, am I eyeing the scale of each element? Mm -hmm. um, yes, so in, in my mind, there is, um, a kind of standard of what the scale of certain placements would be. And so I'm mindful of whether I'm choosing for it to be the standard scale or a uh, more micro scale for certain, you know, intentions or if I want it to be oversized. So, so for example, um, there's this, you know, center hit here. It's like super, it's pretty standard. I don't think there's any reason to make it oversized or to make it undersized. So on like a typical standard t-shirt that might be like nine and a half inches across, maybe nine, eight, like something like that, like um, eight and a half, nine and a half would be like um, what I would typically measure. And so I would, you know, mentally choose for it to be bigger or smaller if I had that intention and stuff like this, you know, like if it's like a left chest, like this is a very typical logo placement. So something like this might be um, like, you know, three inches across, um, and whatever it is. So I have that kind of standard in my mind. And then, um, and then, yeah, like I said, like if I have some sort of reason to, to make it different, I will intentionally make it different. So actually with this one, I was thinking, cause I want to put sleeve hits um, on here. So it's actually going to be a pretty heavy piece, like sort of heavy. There's like a lot of mm -hmm. hits there. So it might be fun to make this like more of like a pendant placement. So it feels a little bit like cuter and smaller and not so like, it's not, it's not a brand. So it doesn't need to be like in your face. Um, so this might actually be smaller and might be cute as like a, like a maybe 1.75 inch <laughs> across situation. <laughs> so, so that's kind of like the, the um, thought I'll always keep in my mind. So that's a great question. Um, and then I think you asked about color. So yeah. How do you determine the intentionality behind the colors you choose? Um, I mean, so if if it's something for um, a client or a certain artist, you know, you'll t you'll tend to have like colors, color palettes that they either like or dislike, um, um, and so you know, I'll try to stick within that because color is is such a personal thing and um, subjective. Um, so if somebody expects you know, a collection to be sort of a certain harmony. I do want them to to be able to at least like at the zoom out or, you know, in blurred vision for that to still come across as something familiar to them. So that's kind of how I pick out color. And then, um, but color is like such a broad conversation. So there's, there's a lot of reasons why something would be a different color um, than not. But in general, if you're working for a client, that's what, that's what I would say. Do so you what have just... your own palette? Oh, sorry. I was going to ask you no, if you no. had your own palette for like personal projects, do you like tend to pick from the same scheme or do you like kind of go crazy? Cause you know, it's, it's for you and not for anyone else. Yeah. So I, so personally, I, I tend to have like a mental palette at least. I don't have like a official palette that I, that I, um, that I keep on the side, but then ironically, you know, I'll, I'll have my, I have my Pantone color books and I keep thinking that I have like this new pal palette. So I generally like, like these like light blood oranges um, mm -hmm. and um, like a really classic, um, like desaturated blue color. And um, I love those together. This is like a personal preference. And I keep thinking, you know, with each project that I'm doing something new or something. And then I go to tell, 
production, like the Pantone colors, and it's like, oh, it's it's the, it's the same. Like, <laughs> so like it's so personal, and um, I some I you know I can't help myself, but like the colors that I like. Um, yeah. But I do love like keeping my eye out for when palettes in nature or just like walking around or looking at stuff on the internet will like inspire me. I definitely save those because. Um, I think working with color is a talent, and being able to harmonize is is something that is, um, I don't know. It's just there's no science to it, and yet, um, right. yet it just like has such a different impact on you when you when you feel it all. Someone else um, do it and do it really well. So I do try mm-hmm. to always have that be like a big category of inspiration that I keep um, adding to. Yeah. I feel like um, that a lot of artists do tend to, you know, they have their they have their mental palette, and it's so even when we intentionally veer away, like you still end up. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's fine because you know it it's just another form of identification for you know who you are as an artist and what your work appears or how your work appears out in the world and. You know, you can see, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have a very specific palette. And when you see work in that palette, they know like, oh, yeah, that's so and so. So I think it's yeah, totally like a powerful. Yeah, it's super powerful tool as well. I think like, you know, a lot of um, people ask the question, um, how do you find your own style um, as an artist? Um so I'm just asking it for you now because uh, I know someone's going to ask that. <laughs> someone's going to ask it. Um, but I think like, you know, I, I actually struggled with that. Not struggle with it, but I I just don't really care that I don't think I have like a big personal style or anything. Um, but that's because a lot of the time your style is your preference and everybody kind of has a lens of what they think personally looks good. And color is one of those big things that, um, you know, you can't help but have like a certain taste for. And so I think a consistency and color palette can also speak to what your style is as kind of like a soft place to start um, if you're stressed about um, finding your own style. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely would agree. Yeah. I'm, now I'm like referencing your color palette and I see, <laughs> I see your, I mean, not your color palette, your, um, your yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, there it is. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I'm I'm like more honest with myself. Is like it's probably gonna end up here, but I will try to challenge myself to be like, okay, right. what if you use, you know, like yellow and purple today, and and then usually by like midday, I'm like, why did I do this? Like, oh, right. <laughs> I mean, at least you try, you know, you, you, yeah. you dip your toe in. Like, it's all that matters. Always, yeah, always try, always try. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm curious if that happens to a lot of folks that are watching you just gravitate towards certain colors there's a lot of folks here that are just really interested in your style and probably been following since day one so a lot of love here about and a lot of requests for that pre-order link i mean i want (laughs) that drop Yeah. Do you have like a, or have you had a moment since this has been probably the craziest year ever, Mm -hmm. the craziest year? Have you had a moment where you did some type of personal project, like a massive one, and you were really satisfied with it? Maybe something you wouldn't have been able to do had you not had, you know, the extra time or, you know, the timing of things? Yeah, you know, I I wish that I could say that I have, and I that's definitely um, you hit a sore spot there. Oh no! <laughs> I think, Sorry. I'm just kidding, but keeping it real because not I definitely see, um, you know, some people really uh, thrive in that sense, and I think that's amazing, and I'm really inspired by um, what people have been able to do with their time during this pandemic, um, and it's tr- like it, that thought has been in the back of my mind probably like every waking moment is. Um, what can I do, especially with like the weight of um, just everything that's you know brought to light this year um, and that people have more of an ear for, um, unfortunately or not, that it's you know come at such a price and at such a late time. But um, it kind of like puts more pressure, I think, on artists as well to deliver in a way that can actually uh, be good for 
for people um, aside from just kind of showing our work. So that's what's been on my mind lately. Um, and, um, you know, also on the work front, like blessed to be stressed. Is that what they say? I, I've been incredibly busy at my full time job. So that's um, good. So, so yeah, these are all like super mm -hmm. real things that I'm sure also a lot of all, a lot of you might be um, experiencing as well. Just um, definitely unique circumstances yeah just to hear different stories about the things that people have accomplished have not accomplished changes you know major shifts like it's just so interesting to like connect with folks and see what their experience has been like yes for sure yeah jessica has a question what resources do you use to stay up to date? That's a good one. And can you recommend any resources for beginners? Um, sure. So I, on, on the digital side, um, I follow a lot of blogs, I guess, like um, I follow just like what's happening in, um, in terms of the industry that I work in. So I, I'd like to know, you know, what's happening in the apparel industry. Um, so I know what to tweak. So that's kind of really specific to that. Um, and, you know, some, if they make like really good e-newsletters, I actually will subscribe to them. Like strangely enjoy when I get like a, like a product centered e-newsletter because it does actually inform me of like what, what people are putting at the forefront of their brands and um, therefore what people are buying into. So I would say like, you know, don't just follow um, design focused um, resources, um, but also like get specific with like the industries that you're interested in, you know, and even if you're not working in the apparel industry, um, all these things can really like jump over into each other and influence one another. You might bring a perspective, um, with your personal interests that someone who's just like so laser focused on their industry might not be able to. So um, I would say don't be afraid to, you know, be inspired by non-design things because at the end of the day, everything is everything is designed. So, um, so there's that. Um, and someone always asks this question. So I feel like I, I'm going to like run over there and just like pick up <laughs> some books because I have like my, my bookshelf of like design. Do um, it. Mentor books. <laughs> I'll link the Amazon. Or should whatever. I go now or should I go later? Go. Okay. I'll I'll go. Up to you. Go for it. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm just on my earbuds. I'll be right back. <laughs> She's coming with the resources. Stand by. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Samuel, your question is up next. It is a good question. I've been wondering this myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh what everything is designed yep everything is designed you know that should be the next creative project as well maybe using this quote for some type of apparel design would be pretty awesome all right folks while we're waiting for your resources to come through um Another reminder to submit your daily creative challenge work um, so you can have Jeanette review those and give you some feedback, which would be awesome because you'll get to hear from the professional herself. Okay. And she's back in record time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I wasn't planning on anyone seeing my workout leggings, but I guess it is what it is. So it's okay, you, you <laughs> ran so fast. I don't think anyone... <laughs> I don't okay. think anyone caught it. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see, but I we have like a really big bookshelf there and then like up there. So I, I realized that a lot of our books are actually super heavy. So I didn't want, I brought over what I could carry, but this, oh my gosh, there's like so much dust on it. Um, I, it's, it's, it's really funny if someone ever catches you reading this because it's like a lot of like different languages. And, um, but what's important is that there's a lot of like, um, just like history of type and um, a good helps you kind of form an understanding of like how letters usually work. Um, and by no means it's like a, like a set of rules or anything, but it helps to know 
because there is deep history in yes in typography so that was that was kind of a i brought this over i know that the hood sisters were actually on a stream um i think before I think mine was, or after mine or yeah i was gonna say i think it's this week too i think it might have been it might be after but okay yes. They but this awesome. is a great book, like for like, and they they wrote it. I think just with such a giving attitude, um, um, at least from my perspective, it feels like that because there's a lot of um, just tips and basics um, that I wish I had known when I first started out in my independent design career. So there's this. This is the freelance and business and stuff um, book by Amy and Jen Hood. And then I won't go through all of my books, but I also brought some of these like um, flash um, tattoo books that do inspire me a lot. This is my favorite tattoo artist. I have this piece mm -hmm. on my arm, um, but I just think it's really incredible to, to see everything uh, laid out together. So I have a bunch of like different, I think this is also another um, tattoo flash book. Who was the first one by? That is by, his name, his name is Wild. It's Maxime Placia Bushi. I'm probably wow. butchering that, but his his handles are M X M T T T. Um, that's his handle, and then I have like random other, like since, like Sakai, so I can get a sense of Ew. like certain designers, and then we have Claws. I have like a bunch of books that I like to leaf through, but these ones really did me, and they're really heavy. So, <laughs> okay, back to work. <laughs> I think that that was helpful for, I've actually got a couple of the links saved and I'll share some with you all as well. I've been meaning to buy the chutzpah, um, the book for a while now. You may read, why. yeah. I know, <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so behind. <laughs> I sent that in the chat for you all. Make sure you, you get this get these resources and then typography is always is always a good thing to brush up on and it's so interesting oh my gosh yeah so highly recommend um definitely the the, the freelance and business book because i know a lot of you might be um interested in at least you know starting something of your own um you know so many things i didn't know at the beginning like um you know what it's like to work with an agent or get a um, accountant, like all the boring stuff, but really the stuff that like, if it, if you just understood a little bit more of it, of it, it wouldn't stress you out and, um, would leave more of your mind, um, available for the design work, which is what we all, um, want to do. So this is how I usually, um, mock up and just as a general rule, like all of these are for, um, proof of concept. So it's really, um, uh, some of the, you know, design stuff might look, or the work might look rough. Um, like here, you can see the pixels, um, but you understand what I'm going for. Um, and I don't want to leave any questions about that, but um, this is how I kind of mask off um, when I'm going to do a sleeve hit. And then, you know, a lot of you guys want to see um, the, other sleeve um, with all the icons I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna start working on those. Oh yeah. Love the sleeve art. It's good. Oh, and don't forget the other sleeve. So when you're mocking up, so left, left, it's gonna be on the other side right here. So make sure that you put this. Oh, and then also another thing that I messed up here is I, you want to think like somebody is going to be sitting like when they're sitting and their arms are like this, you don't want the letters to be upside down. So even oh, though okay. here it, it looks like it makes sense, like it needs to read like this. So um, my general rule is from beginning of beginning of um, the type to go from top to bottom, but definitely the the priority is for it to read right side up when your arms are like this, because your arms are never like this. So <laughs> unless unless they are, I don't know. <laughs> I don't discriminate, but this is this is what my general rules are. Do you ever consider like the position? So for example, like I'm bending my elbow. Like, 
do you ever position like peace of mind for instance is like three words would you like intentionally break it up where <laughs> you bend an elbow is that a thing or am I just uh, making that up no no I, it's sort of because I would definitely consider the the bending like as a part of it I don't think I don't think I've ever done it so that it's like like <laughs> it's like perfectly like, like perfectly peace, segmented mind. yeah <laughs> but I but that's like that's a, that's definitely a specific idea for um somewhere I'm sure um that'll come into play but but that's a good question because I think like you know some inks or whatever like if it was embroidered or something like it would be um it would be uncomfortable to have plastisol like in your right side yeah. your elbow or you know just things where you know you if you have this part like embroidered or something you can't like stretch mm-hmm. right so yeah that's it. yeah I didn't even Keep all these things mind. you have to think of someone asked about so when and maybe this could maybe this is specific to this project but mm-hmm. um are you designing this for or and do you keep this in mind generally when you're doing apparel but are you designing for screen printing or like a heat transfer or are you just kind of designing just to design? Yeah, so I this the standard would be um, screen printed, so water based yeah. screen print, um, and then you know any decisions past that would have to have like some kind of reason or sort of intention to it. So yeah, but usually water based screen print. Totally. So just gonna finish that other clipping mask, and so the next thing you want to do is make a bunch of icons plan is and this is why I love you know working on these collections is, is that each piece each little graphic can go so much further than just on one piece and just everything kind of like as a different player um, on each garment so I'm gonna work on these icons that are gonna go down the um, right sleeve of this long sleeve um, and they're gonna be like boop 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 and then I'm gonna be able to take them and like scatter them wherever else really needs like something on a smaller scale because I do think it's a bit dull to have like um just big piece big piece big piece like on every single garment it's nice to have something cuter and of interest so I have this one and then I think I'm gonna do um I think something significant about the album is or yeah, it's like a, it's a two disc actually. So I looked this up earlier this morning. It's two disc, and so I always love an excuse to bring circles in. Um, sounds really basic, but I just my favorite letter, letter is O. I like circles. Like a circle can be anything. Like it, it I feel like I love um, starting out with a circle and then seeing like that it can be a sort of visual double entendre for something else. So that's just like a little bit of my personal way of working, but so it's two discs. So that makes me, you know, visualize it's two discs and it's actually the 13th. So this song, Peace of Mind, is the 13th track of disc one. So that can actually be imagined in a really visual way. Um, It's obviously not the important thing about the song. You know, we've talked about the lyrics and and whatnot, but as a supporting role, in these smaller hits, we can use it to just add more substance. Otherwise, um, yeah, just a little contrast. Um, I mean, no one's really gonna look too closely, but if they do, there is a reason for for that icon being there. Sometimes I, I see little, sorry, go on. Oh no, I, I got stuck on the fact that you said your favorite letter was O. <laughs> and then I was thinking, I was like, is there an O in her name? <laughs> so oh, now I need to know. I think we all need to know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like related to what I was talking about with the circles, actually, because oh, okay. I just okay. think like, it's like always the item or it's like the letter in a typographic piece that I want to play with like the most whenever yeah. I have a project is that's like, it seems to be like the frame for something happening. Like whether you turn it on its, you know, like in a 3D yeah. way on its side and becomes an oval or it's like a cylinder. Like, I just think it's so versatile. I'm a big fan of the oval. It. It's a portal for anything you want it to be. Exactly, yeah, it could be a portal. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like I don't like uh, J's actually. 
No, I don't to like J's no, <laughs> I don't like J's either. I have a J. And all, yeah, all three of us have J. Goodness, you know the most challenging thing was always trying to find like a a script J that I liked, and I never liked any of them. <laughs> yeah, it's like you either look like it's a like reversed B, yeah, but like skinny, mm-hmm. or it just looks like a T. So it just right. like, neither here nor there. Okay, like. Oh my gosh. Immigration club. <laughs> Finally, someone that understands. <laughs> it's a very nuanced opinion, but I'm glad that you understand. <laughs> yes. I thought I was alone out there. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have a question from Kyra, who, by the way, she just joined today and she mentioned that she, one, she loves your work and she first saw your work at, and I'm going to butcher this. She first saw your work at the Bopomofo as a mural. Does that ring a bell? Oh, you? yes. It's a cafe in um, ah. in LA that was opened by a couple of my friends. And awesome. um, so many people have been able to go and enjoy the mural. And I did some of their merch as well. So um, yay. So I awesome. do you live, maybe she lives in LA. Um, yeah, maybe. Let us know. I'm going to have to look that up because I'm from SoCal and I'm going to have to check it out one day. Yeah, um, they have pretty <laughs> unique food selection as well. So her, um, so she she came up with a question for you. She's super excited to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, she says, this was probably mentioned yesterday, but um, how did you, so how do you go about forming your mood boards for design apparel or for par- the apparel design? And then, um, you know, how do you get caught up in those details? Like, for instance, maybe something like a mural versus apparel design versus any other project that you would do. Um, So in general, I get all of my, almost all of um, my mood board material from Pinterest, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I just think Pinterest, especially for apparel design, it's great because um, as a, you know, it is sort of a social media platform, but there's no kind of like onus on each person or each account to actually have like certain aesthetic or something. It's really purely what you find interesting or what you like. So often you'll see a certain application or just something is really like the shot is bad. It's like a zoomed in photo of something, but the idea is there. So you can actually collect, um, truly collect ideas there as opposed to, for instance, saving things on Instagram. People usually have some sort of Uh, motive of it for it to look good on their feed and whatnot so um, no shade to Instagram but those are kind of that's kind of the difference between collecting inspiration on Pinterest and anywhere else so um, you know once you get your algorithm you know right um, and you search for a lot of those similar things you'll get a lot pop up so my Pinterest is I don't know. I'm pretty proud of my Pinterest. Account. It gives me a lot of good stuff every day. So check that out too. I'm like hitting up all of the websites right now. <laughs> yes, all the resources. Yes. I love it. Okay, let's see what else we got. So nice to be back here. I haven't done an Adobe Live in a while, and I'm seeing a lot of familiar folks. Hey, Mohammed. Okay, so we have, oh, this is another good question. So for the garments that you're using for your mock-ups, where do you source those images? Do you use like Adobe Stock or any other stock websites or or do you actually take the photos of the garments um, just organically? I know a lot of people like to use their own source of mock-ups so what do you typically use since you have to probably do this a lot yeah so similarly to how you might have a bunch of photoshop brushes saved i have a lot of um i'll show you now you can see my screen right yes yeah um uh like i have well these are not organized but i have like a ton of different um bodies saved um these are all from like so I have stuff that I've collected from um, work in the past. And then um, there's always like something you need to tweak about it. Like whether, you know, that the collar is too tight or like, um, so I have a bunch of iterations um, out of 
those needs from the past. And so for new projects like this, I'll grab um, an old mock-up or an old um, blank to mock-up on um, and just do that. But I think like yeah. in general, in general, I don't, I don't use like stock sites necessarily because there's always something that I need to change about it. But over the years, I've kind of, um, you know, tailored um, the pieces to match my um, the styles that I usually want to go for in terms of the whole garment. So for instance, I, you know, I, I'm really, really a big fan of like oversized and wide, wide bodies and just like a really open sleeve. Um, um, and so that's kind of evolved into that. And then I'll make like Photoshop documents of, um, of, uh, different layers of color and like washes and stuff so that I can quickly create a new mock-up for whatever the new project is. Yeah, that's a great idea just to kind of, similar to how people like to just collect fonts, typefaces over the years and just have this like running library just to have, you know, yeah. these different like references also like organize in a library it just seems so <laughs> efficient i need to do better about doing that um <laughs> <laughs> what happens is like the need comes right like i never like there's no place unfortunately i could point you to like gather stock from but it's always like because i needed it at one point that mm -hmm. um that it just um, comes to be so yeah i get in the bad habit of like throwing out <laughs> like, like um no. references I know I maybe because like I don't experiment with apparel often at all and so you know when I'm mocking things up I just kind of like oh I'll just use this this one time and then you're like searching for it months later like oh I really like that crew neck that I use and then it's like gone somewhere are you one of yeah. those people that's like really good about cleaning out your your desktop and like yes like, emptying the trash not just putting things in the trash but yes. then going in and like <laughs> yes that is my life and wow. that's my that's like me in real life as well like I'm a firm believer in spring cleaning um I think I just get bored I love my clothes and I have like you know you have like your staple pieces that last for years but for the most part I like to restart my closet every like six months oh my god you're so yeah you're like, that's so good I know and I like have this whole ritual where I will donate and you know give away things and then I start fresh but then like you know I find myself in the same predicament where oh I you know this would have looked really nice with this one thing but I forgot I donated <laughs> it like last summer so what do you do so I practice the same thing in my real life which is probably I should probably reevaluate <laughs> I mean you're not a hoarder so I mean <laughs> You're the opposite of a bad thing. So I think <laughs> maybe, I'm, but it might be okay. too minimal. There's, you know, there's a fine line between a hoarder and too minimal. I think that I got to find a, a good center. Medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. At least save your, your um, mock-up templates. Start, yeah. start, start small. Start, start there. Right. Start small. Just put it in a folder somewhere. You won't even know it's there. <laughs> I the wonder day. what other... I wonder what other people's habits are. Like, what are, what's your funny, like, quirky design habit that, you know, we all have one. <laughs> I saw Solid. this meme the other day that was like, okay, so first we have to get on the same page that we're, we have the same bad habit. But sometimes when I s quickly save something, I'll go like, I'll like just keyboard smash. Then I'll be like, <laughs> ASD, one, two, whatever. Um, I saw this meme that was like, oh, that moment where you, you press where you save as like QWSDF like three, four, and then your <laughs> computer prompts you that you've already saved that file. Yep. Like, oh my God. Like, dang it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> like I did mash the same fingers at the same angle another day. Oh I don't my know God. To be proud or really just embarrassed. That's the muscle memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Those, I used to do things like that too. I used to be really, also be really bad at like just naming files in general and would just like, ugh, just like put random things and can never find them. Yeah. Photoshop layers. Like, do you name your Photoshop layers? I do. I've got, that's the one habit I switched around for the Very better. telling. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like the one thing I'm doing right. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> what about you? No, I mean, I thought I'd get right to that, but I guess I'm alone now. I this is this is recent, so don't feel like you know. I this is a recent transition, and I feel good about it. But obviously, the other things need some work. So, you know, we're all equals here. <laughs> no, 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 your levels above me at this point. Don't don't pretend <laughs> to be guilty about it. It's fine. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. uh-huh. <laughs> Like I said, we all have our things. I really, our things. I'm super curious, like what everyone's thing is. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what your thing is. <laughs> oh, someone else. PSD layers do need don't need names. LOL. <laughs> See, someone's in your corner. <laughs> I mean, I think so too. But it's like when I do pass off a file, you know, in a professional setting, and they're like, right. I, I like act as if I had them named all along, and I'll just go in at the end and be like this is this that is that and yeah exactly how I work (laughs) yeah if someone else is gonna see it I feel super self-conscious and I'm like okay I have to like I have to or they're gonna just come for me and be like what is this (laughs) what's the worst that could happen I don't know but it sounds scary (laughs) (laughs) oh man you know there's a lot of people that are in the same boat so we should feel safe space feel good safe space y'all Safe space. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, okay. today time is flying, y'all. So we are going to be looking at your daily creative challenge submissions in less than twenty-five minutes. So make sure you complete that and submit it through Behance. Um, again, you're working with shadows, which is really fun. I actually love. I'm not like a photographer by any means, but I love experimenting with like shadows and highlights so it'll be really cool to see what you guys come up with especially post halloween so maybe we'll see some halloween snippets in there but make sure you submit those so jeanette can give you some feedback and yeah you have a little less than 24 minutes now so send those our way all (laughs) righty that's so funny michelle said today i was color picking and the hex code came out to be babe 96 lol what color is that i know what it's color is it a delicious color babe 96 that's so funny I'm sounds like a like a license plate you would see oh i know huh <laughs> oh my gosh i'm like picturing like a like a your color, like a blood orange red. That's what I'm picturing right now. <laughs> for that. Yeah, I see I see like a like a really femme like coral color. Mm. Like I don't know, something a beach blonde would wear. Yeah. That but yeah, tell us right. tell us what color that is, because Every, everybody's waiting. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> oh, she said it's actually a nice green color. Oh, yeah. Mm. A babe with taste. <laughs> I know. Green's my favorite color for the record. Everyone. Ooh. Um, so what you know. shade of green? Um, I used to really love like a true forest green. I don't know what the hex code is for it. But now, <laughs> <How could you? laughs> now I'm like moving towards like a um uh like a sure truce, which is like entering into another like yellow universe. Like oh. Yeah, that's like been my new, my new thing lately. It's very fall appropriate. Yeah. What about you? Is it similar to your design color preferences? It's similar, but I actually like lately I've been loving green like a, as well, like a very, I guess similar to a forest green. Yeah. Like not like really deep, um, Mm -hmm. but not yet not dark, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, Kyra says like a matcha green. I think that's like where mm. my happy place is in my area. That sounds, yeah, yeah. That's a good choice. Mm. Okay, so we have another question <clears throat> from Yen. What did you go to college for and where did you go if you went to college? Yeah, so I actually went to um, UC San Diego. Um, and just like a quick backstory, um, at the time I've, I've always wanted to pursue design, but um, it was, I'd say it wasn't as like accepted, maybe like in my family or my community, it just um, wasn't easy for me to make that choice and, and be really open about it, which sounds really funny now, I think, because we do have a lot of exposure to people being creative and all that. And I think 
hopefully I can be a bit of a force in that, I hope. But um, at the time, you know, I couldn't really pursue it full force. So I went to UC San Diego and actually um, studied studio art, but there was a lot of funding in it. So I didn't actually even pay anything, but I did do a lot of internships. So that was um, what really, I think gave me the education or at least the beginning of the um, exposure to the design world that I needed. Um, I didn't get to go to the design schools that I wanted to, but I did get real world experience um, as early on um, as I could, so. Yeah, really that makes all the difference too when you can have the real world experience. I mean, there's so many folks I know that are either just completely 100% self-taught or didn't go to design school. It's a lot of folks that that I work with as well that just kind of maybe put themselves through boot camps or just had that, you know, real world experience that really got them into the industry. For sure. And there's so many resources for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like everything else. Like you just need a little bit of ambition and, you know, you push towards it and you can make it happen. And I think it's, it solely has to come from a traditional background. Definitely. That's that's yeah. one of the perks of being in a creative career is that you'd be creative with how you pursue your career as well, at least I think. So yeah. um, there's there's ways um, to get the education that's tailored to you, even yeah. if you don't go to school. So Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if like in the next five years that, you know, design school is almost like obsolete because there's so many resources even like going to a place like like skillshare or um, what's the other one Um, like general assembly like even just going through a couple of those courses like you Mm -hmm. can be pretty well equipped to you know make your way through these softwares and learn stuff so yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it's just not a thing anymore in the next five years who knows and it's so expensive too. So I, I tell know. myself that 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 I <laughs> I skirted that um, student loan situation. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you went, that's amazing. Right. I mean, I feel like we all have something to learn from each other, um, and that we have such different backgrounds, and we do end up sort of in similar places. So. Um, I love also hearing from people who did go to design school and, um, you know, little things here and there that I didn't have access to um, end up being really valuable for me too. So there's definitely benefits of both. Yes, absolutely. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. Every, (laughs) everyone is now focused on the fact that these fits are just really doing it for us. So (laughs) yes. (laughs) <laughs> very fall friendly fall winter friendly yeah I wanted to be realistic with what people you know would wear I mean I think seasonality is always like it's always relevant with when you're um, in the back of your mind when you're designing this kind of work mm-hmm. um so what? I'm just trying to keep in mind what I would be wanting to wear I mean it's getting really cold in New York just this week oh I bet so, when does it start snowing for you? Um, usually, like, I would say, like, the end of December, but I'm actually dipping out to California on Saturday, so... Are you? <laughs> for, uh, for a longer stay? Yep, so I'll be there for the holidays. Um, I mean, winter in New York is so long. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> even though I might come back in January, and it'll still be going strong, so... Yeah, um, just a little bit of a break would be good. Yeah, I didn't realize the song came out in two thousand one. Oh my gosh, it feels so long ago. I know <laughs> so much has changed, and yet there's relevance. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cry face. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, I need these shorts. I need them in my life. Yeah, um, I I'm like, I mean, I want them also, but um, I will maybe contact uh, my printer after this and see what we can make happen. Um, although I have purposely designed some of them to be a little bit more costly, just because this is like a dream project or like, you know, like a personally totally. dream project. 
So maybe I can make a more accessible version and see what we can do with it. Yeah, after. I mean, that's totally. I, I think, and I feel like that's one of the questions I hear a lot from folks is, you know, how do you, um, mainly like for people who are interested in freelancing or just like taking their side projects and like, you know, making money off of them or, you know, just trying to do something extra. It's like how to price things. And I think it's obviously it's super thoughtful to have a variety, but you know, I think I, I firmly believe in like price what you're worth. Um, and I'm yeah. not even freelancing full time these days, but I, I certainly believe in that. And I always tell the folks that I, you know, work with, like, you know, you price what you're worth and, you know, we'll figure it out because I think that's, that's fair. And all of the, we're not only paying for your like magical hands and creativity. It's like, it's also just like something authentic and just Made, actually made with love <laughs> so yeah no for yeah. sure I mean, look we, we put so much heart into this um and a lot of research to give meaning to all these little items and I think a few people have said this in a couple of different ways but um I try to tell myself you know especially in the beginning of my career or like at least midway through my career when I was debating whether to price uh, myself a certain way um it's like this might have taken me, like for instance, this um, might have taken me, you know, two days to make, but it took me 10 years to learn how to make this in two days. So those years um, and your unique eye have to be part of the pricing calculation as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we have another great question. Another reminder, folks, we're less than 15 minutes away from design feedback. So we're getting real close. So we had a good question. I can't talk right now. Good question from Yen. Do you feel like the market for graphic apparel is oversaturated? And who are your target market and clients? And how do you find them? I mean, I think yes and no. I think if you, it's all a matter of perspective. Um, I think I could easily say that it's oversaturated um, if I didn't want to do more work in in this area mm -hmm. um it is very very saturated i mean it's, it's honestly like one of the most if not the most saturated markets right now um and at the same time there's a reason there's a reason for that we're, we're never gonna um not have bodies and <laughs> clothes and we're never um not gonna have messages um that we want to say and so um i try to think from that angle um uh, otherwise, uh, I, I see where you may be coming from. Like sometimes things can be get a little bit bleak when we see just how much is is put out there. But um, I will say a lot of it is very um, trendy and uh, for good reason. Um, but there is reason beyond the trend to to love being in this this industry as well. So, right. so that's what I think. <laughs> that's a good answer. Very much appreciate. And like you said, there will always be bodies that need awesome clothing. <laughs> and yeah. it only gets better. It, it should only get better. And then, you know, trends repeat themselves and reiterate themselves. And it's just kind of a part of the circle. Of, totally. Yeah. You know. So I'm finishing up this matching mask design now and you can see how you know if you were here with us on day one we really like kind of had to drag our feet a little bit to get that first hero image out but um once everything starts to come together you know i have you know i'm referencing the physical disc and the literal like um context of the record being released and then the more lyric side of things um and once i've really visualized both of those inspirations it you can see how it became so fast for me to start making um, decisions throughout the line and um, now I can see if everything you know carries the the amount of information I needed to so everything you know says the artist's name or has and or has the um, main lyric that we wanted to emphasize um, 
everything has a balance. So um, no, nothing is too heavy in the way of like, say the record side of things versus the lyrical side of things. Um, so these are the kind of the things that I'm running through in my mind, just checking that everything represents um, the album and the, the song um, holistically, um, but also as individual pieces that we like to see together. And for me, at least it's really satisfying to see everything um, come together and I just imagine like this is this is like a little family you know they're all different and mm -hmm. different folks may gravitate towards certain pieces but there's also no question that they all belong together and they're from the same source and same inspiration so I guess this is like sort of roughly what we are ending up with so now we can, I, I think, are we, how are we doing on time? We have a little less than 10 minutes, but we did get one more question. Um, so Peter wants to know, so what does a day look like for you? And this could be in the context of, you know, working your day job or even possibly like what a day, like working on something for yourself could look like. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, what for does sure. that look so, like for you? I mean, um, I think I answered this question a little bit yesterday, but um, to to in brief, um, this year is different. I think this is the case for everybody. So a day in this year um, doesn't involve the usual kind of like New York life day. So I'm not taking the subway anymore. Um, these are all things that I feel like daily yeah. I'm aware of, just um, not actually having a reason to go out. So um I'll walk you through my whole day but I but in general I try to have a few of these elements in it I always try to be active in some way um, I do think that's really important for um, just overall happiness um, especially in a city that does get dark um, earlier um, and when you're cooped up inside so I try to either do yoga or work out every day um, and um, sometimes it's just super minimal I'm not you know crazy about it or trying to say I'm um, amazing at being well-rounded but even if I just literally lie on the floor and like do some some stretches um, just to get my body moving that's really important to me um, so yeah other than that I, I do work a lot <laughs> um, the word work is always you know it sounds different for me because I'm just I'm kind of like drawing all day um, and probably similar to a lot of you I just um, on zoom calls and drawing on Zoom calls and then off Zoom calls and drawing. <laughs> so, in general, that's that's my day. Um, and yeah, I hope that's maybe relatable or similar to how some of you are are carrying on during this yeah. interesting time as well. Um, two more questions. Do you, Ricardo, do you think the trends end up being repeated in all brands and saturate the new ideas and creativity? Um, do I think that trends repeat in all brands or? Um, um, let me reread this. Do you think that trends end up, <clears throat> excuse me, trends end up being repeated in all brands, excuse me, and saturate new ideas and creativity? So yeah, I think he's asking like, like, do we see the same trends popping up? And that's yes. And then, you know, does that interfere with new ideas that emerge? Um, I think that's interesting because, um, yes, I think by, by way of um, the definition of a trend, like we do see it a lot on, we'll see the same, for instance, I've been seeing the same collection of fonts on a lot of um, apparel brands lately. And that's just, the way of things. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because our eyes are kind of accustomed to get accustomed to things during certain er eras of life. <laughs> and so um, we might actually like that. And I mean, I think I'm just defining trend now, but at the same time, you know, from the perspective of a designer, um, I love knowing what the trends are because they do inspire um something new or different. So if I know what the trends are, then I know what someone is familiar with. Um, so a good example is actually what um, I've sort of mocked up here is this trend of doing the um, um, the university style sweat top, the crew neck. Um, 
and I'm able to riff off of that to do something a little bit different. I'm not saying that I'm breaking some huge mold, but I am referencing um, the trend so that um, I can attract somebody and then um, give them something new as well. So I do think that the trends in, uh, inspire me, um, not necessarily just to copy, but to create um, new things as well. So that's a great answer. Yeah. Um, oh no, I lost the other question. Okay, you have another, this is like a two-parter. Um, so Jessica studied business and is thinking of pivoting into design, um, but has felt a little discouraged because she doesn't have the background. So what what type of self-learning tools, boot camp, similar to like what we discussed earlier with the you know, the general assemblies and skill shares out there, like what would you recommend for someone who wants to kind of go in that direction and, and feel confident in doing so? Um, is there a specific um, area of design? Um, maybe I'll just assume that she wants to do um, like graphic design work, like agency style stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'd say there's um, a lot. I'm, I'm all about like real wor world experience, um, giving you um, the knowledge you need to know and also inspiring you to learn. So it's hard for me to say, you know, go to Skillshare and take this class because you'll kind of assess what you need to learn based on your need at the time when you're in that world, real world situation. So maybe for instance, if um, your friend or even your parents, I mean, I did this in the beginning, like my dad um, started an, an acupuncture clinic. He's really good. He, um, but um, obviously it's like, he's my dad. So A, he <laughs> has to accept my um, <laughs> proposal for designing for him. Um, so that's a plus as a beginning desi beginner designer. Um, and also, you know, he'll, he'll be like really honest with me and, and all that. So it's good to have like, just kind of pull from what's close to you um, and begin to launch yourself um, outward using that. Um, I would say like from, from then on, if people hear that you're, you know, working on this type of, of, of thing and maybe you're posting about it um, on social media, um, you just start to kind of solidify your identity as that in people's minds and um, hopefully you can get feedback and, um, and inspire your learning from, from then on. So definitely, you know, starting out with real life um, work, I think is, is a great way to learn. Yeah, and that's a great, it's a great point. And I think just to piggyback on that, you know, really utilizing your network to you know help you get the experience is like very it, it's it should be easier and it and it's actually really great just like you know it's it's really great experience dealing with different types of clients and working on different types of projects um Jeanette mentioned like working with her dad like maybe you could reach out to like friends maybe that our own social and want to create certain types of content if that's what you're into or reaching out to maybe some local businesses and offering some type of pro bono work that you can test out like just really utilizing your circle is a great way to just kind of get started and figure out like what are the types of projects you like and you gravitate towards is a good strategy as well. Let's see where we're at. Okay, we are less than two minutes away from reviewing your creative challenge submissions. And I think after that, we'll have maybe 10, 15 minutes left in the stream. And Jeanette, you can wrap things up and tell us where to find you and all of the the places we can follow your your work and your journey and all the fun stuff Sounds um, good. And, okay so the clock is going the clock down the clock down <laughs> i just made that up guys the countdown <laughs> yeah okay so let's do 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 Share. Hold on, one second. 
Oh no, I don't have my system preferences selected. Hopefully. Okay, okay, there we go. Let me get to where I need to be. Awesome. Okay, cool. We are getting ready to take a look. Are we good to go? Awesome. Okay, so here we are, friends. We are in Discord and we are looking at your submission. So I believe this is DCC number six Photoshop. And we're playing with shadows here. So let's start with near Viper 01. Okay, so this is our first one, Jeanette. And we're working with shadows. Uh, so this is their use or their interpretation of shadows. So they used an image and then played around with um, some shadows in the image. So this is our first one. So it looks like some spooky, spooky, scary, spooky theme, which I love. And it looks like there's like a, a werewolf running in the distance, which is really cool. Sorry, I'm just trying to full screen this. I don't mean to blank stare <laughs> this person's work at all, but I just can't see. Okay, okay, now it's sort of big. Okay, I can sort of see okay, it. Okay, yeah, I'm, to zoom. <laughs> I'm like trying to zoom in with my fingers and it's like, yeah. I definitely go. don't mean to deadpan your, your <laughs> submission. I just, it was like this small. I see it now, okay. Okay, cool. And we have these spooky eyes peering from the forest. This is oh, very... is that um, superimposed? That that um these eyes. Is that... That's what I think. That's what the, I'm the wolf running across, and I see the date in the back as well. I wonder what the significance of of that is. If it's oh, like yeah. a two days before Halloween thing, or just you know, scary 2020 in general, which <laughs> either way that works. That's mm -hmm. a, that's a good point. I'd love to know the significance of the date too. Um, I feel like there's like a three part story here that we have to put together and there's some significance between the date, the werewolf and these eyes appearing in the wilderness. So let us know what you think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You have any I, other feedback? I like the I like the little um, details of extra discovery. I feel like that's always in when yeah. you're creating an original work. Because the wolf, I'm kind of thinking, oh, um, that that's what I see at first, and I think, oh, maybe that was inside the shot to begin with. Um, and then as you discover like um, any more added elements, it's kind of right. fun to keep lingering on the image. Yeah, totally, I agree. Awesome, well, good job. Let's go to the next one. So next one we have Fairy, A Mysterious Man. That is the title of this one. I'll try to zoom in a little bit more so we can see. Ooh. Did they come with like comments of, of um, what they did or what they're inspired by or? Um... Um, not necessarily, they just, you, they either post and they can leave a comment. So mm. this is what we we got, the mysterious man. So it's the only context we have, but. I mean, I feel like it comes across. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's almost, I'm, I'm almost interested to see the before because like this is a really like dramatic use of shadow yes. in a great way. Um, it feels very like, realistic and so yeah, I'm like, I like how graphic sorry to cut you off I like how oh no graphic, you're fine um, like a photo can be sometimes um yeah. so I like what they did there with that that it could be like a um kind of feels like when there's like a Netflix um uh what's it called like a screen title and 
it's just like the silhouettes or something and there's oh, yeah. a beauty feel to it but it's also mm-hmm. a photo so um that's a cool aesthetic yeah and I don't know if these like these you know lights the light reflecting off of the window is intentional or not but I, I think mm. it's just like a nice touch here like you can see that this side or not the side but the light is kind of reflecting off the window and a lot of interesting uses oh is this a person (laughs) oh my gosh that wasn't the mysterious man the whole time oh my gosh i feel like we just cracked a case right now yeah (laughs) wow you you saw us embark on a journey and and you saw the twist and everything Oh my gosh. I was like, do you see this face? <laughs> oh. oh my I mean, god. Part of me hates that, you know, and when, when I counter that like on like little videos on TikTok or something. But oh, yeah. he's like, it's just like totally I mean, I don't hate this, but it's like, oh that feeling, it's intense. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I I love like, the like oh. <laughs> the just finding the little Easter egg or like the world's yeah. the weird Waldo moment or yeah. Just, yeah. That was exactly. so satisfying. Not the mysterious man. He's the unsuspecting victim. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, the victim. Wow, yep. wow, wow. Good one. I, we, you got us that one. Oh, wait. Let's see. I didn't read the so, cover. Still coming out of Max Fog. Didn't realize there was a new challenge catching up. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so this must be an older challenge, but it's pretty awesome monster hunters i'm not sure which uh challenge this was but i mean this is some good stuff it's crazy yeah maybe it was for like a um maybe it was an actual a screen title challenge or something looks like mm-hmm. monster hunters could be a show or something yeah very cool this like landscape in the back that just really feels like mars and arizona mixed up like <laughs> it's very it's very cool the fine line between Mars and Arizona. Mm-hmm. There, there is. I feel like Arizona is like the closest I can yeah. get. <laughs> or as far as Utah. I know. Yeah, as far as I know. <laughs> Monster hunters. So you must be hunting oh. aliens. I would assume because the astronaut. But I could be wrong. This could be a parallel universe that I have not heard of. <laughs> okay, so gray ghost. Let's see if your piece matches the name. So it looks like we have curfew, sunrise to sunset, stay indoors. That's spooky. What is the flyer? Oh, it says Grey Ghost. So some some more hidden treasures here. Yeah, I like all the hidden elements. I'm I'm like on guard right now for a face to pop up in the sky or something. (laughs) Same. (laughs) This is, the lighting here is really nice because it's it's almost feels like a a dawn setting like you know the sun is about to go down and folks are you know trying to get home before the curfew because something is lurking around town like that's the vibe of feeling yeah the right mood now. is there mm-hmm. yeah like when you're when you're younger and your parents tell you to come in the house for the street lights or when the street lights come on you have to be home by then and you always wonder why <laughs> flashbacks <laughs> yeah yep and you're always like well what happens if i come home past the street lights something gonna That's happen when the the mon- monster hunters come out yeah or the monster as i like to call it <laughs> just get in trouble <laughs> but, yeah i do like this um do you have any other thoughts um no I just I wish I had a little bit more context but I can only assume this kind of looks like it's like a 3d rendering which whether you intended for it to be or not I think um it's an interesting um aesthetic so if you're able to create this in 3d that's really cool it's something about the lighting feels like it's like in a in a a video game or something so yeah um perhaps they're into game design or um something like that but it definitely gives off the foreboding it's like the scene in the video game before like it goes goes black and then it's like the mission starts. So that's what I'm getting. From that this. is exactly what this feels like. It's like that transition. Mm-hmm. And then, then you're inside of the building and you have to find all the objects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's, that's nice. I, I like that. 
Okay, so next step. Ooh, some Loch Ness monster action. Ponga ahead. I actually believe in this like Loch Ness monster craziness. Don't judge me all. So <laughs> <laughs> I sort of do too. I mean, you know, until they disprove it. There's I know. I know. Give me hard evidence. Hard evidence, please. Yeah. I would watch a Netflix special on this. Oh, for sure, for sure. Mystical creatures are, are fun. I like that they the the timestamp is if like someone actually took this photo and was like, I saw the Loch Ness monster. Like, here's the photo. <laughs> I was just about to say that's a nice touch. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually feel like, um, or it feels less like just straight Photoshop because it's like, oh, yeah, I found my found this in my great uncle's box in the closet and he's, he was actually in the Loch Ness tracker or something like there again I think that the common thread is that there's um just insinuating a story with yeah. all of these totally yeah I like that and the there's a little bit of like graininess to it and it, it feels a little like the photo is dated and has some history and it just kind of plays into the whole mystery of this scene or the story so yeah well super done. moody yes well done look at him he's just floating in the background and i think we have oh we have a few more so let's go a little bit faster so i thought i saw something see <laughs> just playing with us giant spider what and Aww. you see it <laughs> Oh, so you really did see it. <laughs> I'm such a weenie, like when it comes to, well, everything. But I can't do scary <laughs> movies, and apparently, I can't even do like Photoshop, like scary face, spiders. So. <laughs> Imagine seeing a spider that big in real life, like the size of a car. <sighs> oh my Aunt, why are you doing this to us? My heart rate. <sighs> I don't know if I'm afraid of like giant spiders, but I don't know. <laughs> I would be more scared of that than this, actually. I would actually really? probably be excited that there might be like a dog, like, I don't know. <laughs> a dog with red <laughs> eyes? <laughs> I don't know. At least it's like the, the appropriate size. Like when something is missized, like there's oh, something, yeah. there's something, there's something supernatural else. about it, which makes it scarier. Yeah, very like <laughs> Stranger Things and something's happening. I love this. There's like the werewolf is returning to his pact before the sun comes up and the rainbow comes out. <laughs> <laughs> this is like telephone, but with Photoshop challenge, like they all are sort of telling a story yeah. and each of them is saying like one line or something, but they just don't know it, but they could get together and put together like a, I don't know, like a picture book or something. <laughs> That's another great idea. It's just like riffing off of someone's idea and just keep keeping that going. That's such a good one. Should that should be it. a Adobe challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that in mind, y'all. This one's really nice. I like the, yes, this is another one that feels like it could be like a physical like photo that was taken and just like the graininess, but then there's also like a lot of like shadows and some fades and it just looks really cool. And the eyes are like spread out this time. So you can see there's just like little werewolves hanging out. <laughs> Super eerie. Yeah. I'm keeping my like head right here. I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get sucked into the computer. No, it's always like when you look into the videos and they're like, hey, look at this interesting thing. And then like a thing jumps out at you. Like after um, that, I feel like I'm always like, well, I'm just going to sit right here. <laughs> okay, we have three more. We're going to try to run through these super fast because we are running out of time. This one looks awesome. We can actually see the werewolf this time. And he looks like he's running towards you, Jeanette. So maybe we should. Oh, great. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, skip <laughs> forward. Oh, this one's creepy. <laughs> yeah, this is, that is like a nightmare. That's it, lovely. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, in a, in the most endearing way. Like, if I'm just saying, if I saw this in person, you know, never take walks through the woods in October. You no, just, yeah, just as a rule. 
Oh, thank you for giving us the original so we can yes, compare. Yes, yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's good to see before and after. Yeah. I wouldn't have okay. even known like the the father and son or whatever's going on there actually looks like it's part of the original photo. So yeah, it was a good job. You can get credit for the Photoshop work there. Okay, I think that might be all for the shout out. Oh, this is the last one. <laughs> this is oh, this one is so funny. It's it's a uh, Godzilla. Oh, Godzilla. I don't know why I was thinking Jumanji in my head. Um, <laughs> It's not the same thing. <laughs> this one's fun. Um, yeah, my only suggestion would be to get rid of our funky Adobe stock logo because <laughs> it takes away from this awesomeness. But I think this person is trying to hint um, um, you guys that they need a Adobe stock subscription. Well, you know what? I'm not the right person, but I will. <laughs> I will tell the right Pass person. It along. <laughs> All right, I think that is all for me. And everyone, thank you so much for sending your submissions. That was really fun. I got to relive one of my favorite holidays. Um, so that's always fun. I love Halloween. And I think we just have like literally a couple minutes. I'm so sorry, Jeanette, to just wrap things up. And this has been fun. Oh, we have 10 minutes. I'm so crazy. We have time, friends. Okay. We have time. So we have 10 Before minutes we, to wrap well, up. We have not have time for some questions, maybe, because I can yeah. wrap up really quickly on what's going on here. But basically, I've um, finished to a good point of um, what this line is going to look like. So you guys can get a sense of, um, you know, we started from here. Um, and um, just in general on decks, sometimes I like to um, just show the graphic um, and larger scale so that they're not just experiencing the mock-up, but I also like to have an overview at the end so we can um, just really prove the point that everything does go together really cohesively um, and just kind of prove that, you know, these can be mixed and matched um, and everything I was talking about earlier with um, just that through line of, of what makes it all um, say the same message, but um, in slightly different uh, voices as a apparel family. So this is the overview and yeah, I'd be happy to see if there's any um, questions left since I've pretty yeah. much wrapped up my work here. Um, yeah, let's see. I had to, sorry folks, my laptop was gonna die. You don't want that to happen. Um, any final questions for Jeanette? I know we wrapped up a pretty exciting two days. Um, we all want to add these pieces to our wardrobe for sure. So let's see what we got here. Um, oh, wow. Well, office hours are awesome. Yes, I'm sorry, friends. I am not the Adobe stock person. But like I said, nice I try. Will, <laughs> I know. Nice try. We're It's a big company and we can't possibly know each other. <laughs> we can't know everybody. But I will... I will figure it out for you. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna scroll through. Oh, we have a good one. Juan Carlos Gill. What type of cursive typography do you recommend um, for constantly using for illustration? Um, it's hard because when I use on a laser cutter, it breaks the moss storm. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. So like maybe what type of um, cursive or script typography would you prefer to use for something that could potentially be laser cut and still kind of keep its its shape? And I think that's what he's asking. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, for sure, like with functionality being the priority, um, I'm gonna assume that for this project you're working on, there's, um, no other reference, but um, just what you like and what we'll print. Because um, of course there's so many different types of scripts that you could use depending on um, the brief for the project. But in general, my first thought is um, for, for a cursive, you could just do like something 70s inspired. There's a lot of 70s inspired fonts that have like a really, really, really just um, heavy base. Um, and the rest of it, it's quite thick as well. Um, so just kind of like anything in like the 70s, uh, 60s too, like era um, of typography or font families um, 
could be a good place to start looking since everything is actually really substantial. Yes. Okay, I hope that answers. Oh my gosh, so many good questions. Um, so yes, Juan, I hope that answers your question. Let's see. Do you know when Illustrator for the iPad is going to have the function that cards sent back in our different brushes? Illustrator. Okay, I hope I'm reading this correctly, but I believe you're asking having the function that the card sent to back and adding different brushes. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting this question correctly. So for the brushes question, um, there will be more brushes added at some point to illustrate on iPad, um, similar to you can add brushes on desktop. So that's something you can look forward to in the future. And then um, having trouble with your second question. So if you could just clarify that one for me, I'd be happy to answer it. Um, Steve let us know that there's a lot of documentaries about the Loch Ness Monster. So I asked what he recommended. So I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have here. Any final questions? Uh, where can I watch the first part? You can watch um, Jeanette's session from yesterday on Adobe Live, or not Adobe Live, excuse me, Behance.com. Um, and then you can just go and watch the replay under the live tab. So make sure you check that out if you missed day one. And if you want to see more iPad work, I. I did um, work more on Illustrator on iPad um, on day one. So if you're looking for that, that would be where that is. Wow. Oh, okay. One clarified. What I was saying is in the Shape Builder tool on the iPad, mm -hmm. uh, you have sent to front. Where are we going to have the functionality for sent to back? Oh, okay. Now I understand what you're saying. Um, that's something that we definitely talked about with our beta community and um, it's definitely on our list of things. So just look out for that. And then we have a question from Steve. What platforms do you prefer to design on? So right now you're working in, or I guess in the past two days you've worked on Illustrator on iPad, Illustrator desktop and Photoshop. Are there any other platforms that you like to work with? These are actually the main ones. I um, I do have a, a pretty consistent daily flow with all of these programs. So I, I do always, almost always start in Illustrator and you'll see that on day one, I built a deck in Illustrator and then I began to fill in um, the parts of the deck that I set up for myself from there. So whether that takes Photoshop, whether that takes iPad work, it kind of all goes back into Illustrator and. Um, you know, a lot of you know, and probably why you like Illustrator too, is because it's um, non-destructive. So anything that I make, um, that's a, you know, shape that I plan to keep using in different ways, um, I'll have safely stored in my Illustrator. So I would say I'm, I'm on here most of the time. I actually don't even, I don't use InDesign or anything like that. So. Interesting. All right. Yeah, so make sure We'll have, oh, Jessica. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get there that quickly, but Jessica, I will, we're running out of time, but I would certainly love to take your question offline and you can reach me at jwhitaker at adobe.com. I would certainly love to help you out and learn more about what are good resources to get started with graphic design. Um, make sure you all check out the schedule. There's a lot going on um, just all day and this whole next week actually, I mean this whole week, excuse me. So next up is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew. Um, then we're gonna get into mobile app design with Brandon, XD Creative Challenge, and then Design in the Dark with Andrew and the Hitzpa twins who we talked about earlier and have that amazing book. So 
Uh, where can we find you, Jeanette? Thank you for the awesome two days. To send, tell them where we can find you and follow you and get all the good stuff. For sure. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in today and yesterday. Um, it's pretty cool to have just like, you know, signs of life in my house in a way while I'm working. <laughs> so that in itself has been really pleasant. And then, of course, thank you, Jasmine, for for moderating today. Um, we're going to chat later about our shared interests. But um, yes. so you can find me um, at JeanetteLiao.com. That's my website. Um, and on Instagram, I'm also just Jeanette Liao. So um, uh, yes, spelled J-E-N-N-E-T-L-I-A-W. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Claudia, for being here yesterday. And we'll see you all next time. See you later. Thank you.